This tutorial will show the workflows of how to identify compounds in complex mixtures. There are in general two big and important use cases for identification. One workflow or one use case is to identify components should occur and I want to test if they are really in there. For this, the quantification can be used because there you identify and quantify compounds in mixtures and you can define how to identify a special compound. In this case here, I have a urine spectrum of a newborn child and I don't know which components are in there. For this I can apply the match, match 1D spectrum, the spectrum on screen, I will use the spectrum from my BioRef code database, this is the list, and I have already imported some keys from the human metabolome database. So I have, for example, key biofluid. See this occurs in blood or urine, this only in urine, this in blood, CSF, urine, and so on. So I want to restrict my search to all compounds which are expected in urine, and then all the number of compounds are reduced. I select all of them, 327, and then I say OK. I need to tell the program the shift, the allowed variation in shift, this is in this case 0 0.02 ppm, I expect some coupling differences due to the matrix, so I allow a maximum variation of 0 0.7 hertz. The intensity similarity should be 75%, and this minimum signal to noise I expect is 5. All other signals should not be taken into account. So I say OK, and now the preparation is running. This means that all the compound spectra are being read and prepared. This could take a long time if you do this the first time. Otherwise, in this case, this is already stored and just reading. And now the spectrum was peak picked and the matching is then performed. The algorithm uses all processes from your computer so that this is sped up. And at the end, you will get such a result panel. Here you see a lot of compounds are identified. Yellow ones, these are plausible. And red are not identified. And here you can also see, for example, the identifiability. If you have a singlet here, of course singlets are always found in such a complex matrix because if there's a single, then it can be found easily. So if you go here with a mouse and then look at the tooltip, then you will see the first indicates if you have multiple regions multiplets, and so on. The singlets, of course, have no filled stars, but a compound like this one here has multiplets. All peaks can be assigned, and these are clearly visible peaks. From the match, you will see a quality factor, but also here an indication of what was identified. So you have, for example, peaks assigned, multiplets assigned, high concentration compound, but here for this lactic acid, Multiple regions are not assigned, and we can have a look at this. If you click then on this, you will see an overlay of different things. So the black one is the original spectrum. The orange one is the unassigned peaks, so it's not assigned yet. Green means that these peaks are uniquely assigned, and red means that there is an ambitious assignment in this case. So I click on lactic acid, and this is one of the regions of lactic acid. This is my reference spectrum. 
I expect this in the integral here. And then you can see that this one here at 1.33 ppm, and I have a second signal here. If I click on this then, you can see, okay, I expect this here, and it tells you all peaks are identified, but the intensities might be influenced by overlap, but it's plausible now. If I go then again into this region here, then I see this is ambitious. So I don't know there are several compounds in there. What you can also do instead of matching the entire spectrum, you can click here, so right mouse click, and say identify this peak. Now this is identified, and then you see these are my actual results. And I just have all of the compounds, which have intensity in this area. Most of them are not matched. There's a second tab labeled All, which shows all the matches which are stored in the spectrum. I have all the compounds here, which have assigned peaks, and what I see here, and this is in an artificial example, I have the lactic acids two times. I have it measured in D2O and one in plasma. So in the BioRef code, you can sometimes have spectras, which are measured in different solvents, if the shift is significantly different, for example. You can also see, if I go over with the mouse here, that some information was imported from the HMDB. So D-lactic acid is the end product of the enzyme and so on. So this information you have for all of these, if this is available in the HMDB, then you will have all this biological information here at your mouse tip. So I will say, okay, my lactic acid plasma can confirm if it's there, not there, or unclear. I say it's not there, and this one I say, okay, it's there. And then you see the peaks are then uniquely assigned. Then they're getting green. So if you then look in your spectrum again, you have a look and then you see, oh, I noticed I know this pattern. Could this be valine, for example? And then you can get, for example, the all, go to the filter and enter valine, and then you see not identifiable. Why not? You click on this. And then you see the spectrum is loaded in, but then you easily see here, valine has four regions, and it tells me at this position, at 0 0.99, this is not identified, and it is clearly seen here. So this is my valine reference spectra. This is the correct pattern, but it does not have the correct shift here. What's this for a compound? Right mouse click, identify this peak, and then onto the actual results. You will get some hints here. And here, in this case, in this area, there are many compounds available. And of course, then you need some biological information, or click on the spectra, or look on the other side of the spectra. What is really in there? After you have done this for a set of spectra, you can go to Create Quantification Method, and then it helps you create a quantification method based on the confirmed compounds or all identified compounds or plausible compounds and by then clicking on import.